Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts. Now listen to this, you guys. When it comes to trying to find that right person, okay, you have got to look at characteristics. Have you ever gone shopping for a car? When you go shopping for that car, some some people, some men kick the tires. Some people, uh, you know, they sit, they see how the seat fits them. Does it fit them or does it feel claustrophobic? Are they bumping into everything? Uh, does it have, I always look for a good turn radius and great brakes. I want to know I could whip that baby around without having to go back and forth and back and forth, you know. And uh, I had a big car, and that car could turn better than a lot of people's smaller cars. I was like, what's wrong with your turn radius? So that is a big, is it's a major factor when you have to do a quick maneuver. Okay. So anyway, those kind of things that are important to you are the same type of things you need to look at when you're looking for the right man. How does the man, I remember when I was first in church, the older ladies used to say, no, I'm one. The older ladies used to say, watch how they treat their mother. Now, you don't want a mama's boy, but watch how they treat their mother. Mm -hmm. And if they're kind and respectable and sweet to their mother and considerate, yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good starting point. But don't stop there. Keep watching. Watch how they treat you when you first get to know them and watch how they start treating you when you start to become more familiar. And also watch how they interact with other people under stressful situations and how they relate to you while they're in a stressful situation. Okay? Another thing to look at is how do they manage their money? What is their living situation? Do they always have to live with someone? Do they always have to hook up and roommate with somebody? Their brother, their sister, their cousin? Do they ever have their own place? How do they keep it? How, how do they keep their car? Do they have a car? Do they, I mean, and it's not about materialistic stuff. But it's about a quality of life. Is this the kind of person, if you were to lose your job, you could depend on to help keep a roof over your head? Or is this the kind of person that if you fold, the whole picture falls apart? Because you can't fall back on them. They don't have a backbone. They don't have a pot or a window. Because you've been taking care of them. Hmm. Think about that. Yeah. All of those kind of things. You have to kick the tires when you're dealing with a man. You know? You got to check the turn radius. You got to check and see how does it pull those hills. Does it get overheat too quickly when you pull it up a steep hill for five or six miles? Do you have to pull it over and let it cool off? You don't want somebody like that. That's a hot temper. You don't need that. So... And some things are a good mix. There are some people that are easy to get along with, and you may not be the one that's easy to get along with. You may need a lot of overhauling from the Lord and a lot of inner healing. But there are some men who are very patient and very kind. They're not pushovers. And unfortunately, sometimes you women with strong natures and hot tempers tend to browbeat a good man and you turn him into a bitter man rather than a better man. Watch how you handle men. Don't castrate a man. Don't ever tell a man he's not a man. Don't ever treat him like he's nothing. Don't disrespect him. Not if he's a good man. Oh my goodness, please don't do that. Think about how you treat people as well. Because sometimes the way you treat people is what you get back. And sometimes the way you treat yourself determines what you get. Now, I knew a situation. The Lord had brought this to my mind while I was praying before I did this, this particular video. And he reminded me of a man who had one woman. The neighborhood talked about it. It was a big joke. 
This one woman, he abused her. He, they weren't laughing at the fact that he abused her. That wasn't funny. It was what happened after that that was funny. He abused this woman. He mistreated her. He cheated on her. He treated her like dirt. I mean, he had total contempt, no regard for her whatsoever. And she was a good woman. She wasn't one of these women that you need to beat into shape, so to speak. No, this was a good woman. Now, she died. And he ended up with another woman. Now, this man was controlling, domineering, overshadowing. Oh, I mean, he was just a big tyrant. But when he met this other woman, this woman was the queen of Sheba, baby. She knew she was all that and the bag of chips. She wasn't having it. As far as she was concerned, she deserved the best treatment, the highest of respect. Oh, baby, you're going to get some of this. You got to bring some to get some, and you ain't getting nothing. If you take nothing from nothing, leaves nothing. So you're going to have to earn this one, baby, because I do not bow. I hold my head up high. And I have very high standards. And if you don't meet my standards, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road. I ain't got time for you. Well, you know what they said in the neighborhood? The same man that was so abusive in his first marriage. Yeah, they hooked up. They got married. This man treated this woman like a queen. He stepped, he fetched, he walked, he showered her with gifts. He took her to the nicest places. Oh, I mean, she got the best of treatment. He was kind. He was respectable. He treated her with the highest level of respect. He opened the door for her. Oh, my God. Goodness, he was so chivalrous. It was eyes. I mean, it was head spinning, shocking. People were like, wait a minute, is this the same guy? But she had the self-esteem that demanded. Now, she wasn't a demanding woman, but she knew what she wanted. And if he wanted her, hey, he had to bring all the right stuff to the table or else this was not jumping off because I am too important and valuable to myself to settle for some nonsense. I won't have it in my life. And they had a very successful marriage. That was the funny part. Now, she didn't particularly train him, but because he saw her as such a high level of a catch, Oh, boy, he, uh, he upped his standards. <laughs> yeah, he got his act together real quick. So I say that to say, sometimes it's the way you carry yourself that can draw the worst kind of treatment or draw the best of it. Because you have to be willing, ready and able, stable enough to say, I will be alone and enjoy my own company rather than settle for nonsense. I don't need that. I don't need a man. I want a man, but I don't need one. I can definitely live without and be very happy and content because I have the Lord. And when you have that going on inside of you, they see it. It's obvious to them that you're not hard up, desperate, and sorry. I don't know what it is about men. They tend to disrespect sorry people. Yeah, you are sorry. Yeah, you sorry, all right. I don't know what it is that, that makes them put down people who are, are already putting themselves down. But anyway, I just am hoping and praying that every one of you gets to see the beauty that 
God has put within. And once you get to see the, you, you know, let me tell you, I have seen some women who, if you look at their face, if you just take your hand and go like this, and you look at their face, you block out the hair, do the clothes, the whole thing. You say to yourself, that's not even a pretty woman. But when they get through putting the whole package together, you see a very handsome or very attractive woman coming in the room, stately, confident, uh, statuesque. I mean, whatever, all the terms you want to add to it, classy, sophisticated lady. You see one walking through the door and they always look attractive. They always look good and they're not pretty. Then you see some pretty women, very, very pretty women who can walk through the door and wow, every eyeball gazing at her. But no, she's so she's self-conscious. She's insecure. She's not happy with her looks because she has been made to believe the lie of how unattractive and imperfect she really is. So she sees herself as one of the least attractive people in the room, if not the most unattractive. And it's a lie. But her, the belief system has been warped. It has been damaged, shorted out by too many insults and criticisms. So what happens when she's in a room? The self-consciousness is in her eyes. You can see it. She doesn't know what looks good because she doesn't think she's worthy of the time. So she doesn't even invest in finding out what would look best on her. And she's the homely one and the frumpy one. and She's got the short waist and she wears the gathered skirts and they balloon out. And then she wears, she doesn't wear shoulder pads. Uh, and she's real round shouldered and she's got little shoulders and, and she's, she, she just, you know, she just kind of curls up and then her clothes just, just hang off of her. And it's like, what's wrong? Is something wrong about the way her clothes hang? Everything feeds into that. And this could be a drop dead, beautiful woman, but because she doesn't know it, she doesn't believe it. She can't see it for looking at the ugly that everyone else has superimposed on her. So what happens? She ends up with the abusive man. She ends up with the users and the jokers and the good for nothings because they see a desperate woman who thinks she has nothing to offer. So they take her for all they can get because she's got it going on. They know it, but they know she doesn't. So they use her up and tear her down in the meantime. Don't let that happen to you, ladies, please. Don't let that happen to you. Okay, I'm done once again. God bless you. We're dealing with the inner man today a lot. I'm just in that kind of a mode. God bless you. Cheerio, chin up. Love thyself.